Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colin Dixon's on the hooks. I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. There's a place in Oklahoma. Have you heard about the like, the Coca-Cola? It's, it's like the Pop Palace or something? Yes. What's that called? Pops. Pops. And this place is uh, uh, in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. Would well, you know what city it's in, or is it? It's uh, Arcadia, I think. Arcadia, Oklahoma. Yeah. That's the birthplace of tourism. I think we got like you know, uh, people travel there for the weather usually, yeah. right? The, 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 when they're running from a tornado. Yeah. So they Arcadia though, and there's a place called Pops. And my understanding is they have every kind of pop. Almost in history. They do. It's amazing. And, and this place is in the middle of nowhere. And then they have a huge, what, pop can out in front? Or it, a it's huge? A, it's a neon pop bottle. Actually, it's not neon. It's like a, a, a flective met metallic. It's really it's really neat. And it's in the middle of Arcadia. And, and is that pretty, place pretty full? I mean, people go there a yeah, lot? On, yeah, it's a truck stop. And so um, people are, you know, I mean, it's a good place to stop because there's nowhere around. But they literally, they, they, it's all glass walls. And so they put all these pop bottles on the walls so that when the sun comes shining through, it makes these cool colors inside. But they have, I mean, you can get a turkey dinner pop bottle there. You can get, um, you know, roast beef sandwich. I mean, they have the weirdest drinks there. So you can get a roast beef flavored drink? You can. Oh, sick. And let me tell you how it tastes. It tastes like you would think. <laughs> <laughs> but they have like um, the old brands that are no longer around. They, they have like do. Tab. Yeah. Tab. Jolt Cola. Jolt Cola. They've got that. Yeah. It's all there. And the thing is, it's they're, that they're a purple cow. Exactly. People Pe go around and talk about it. Yeah. Now, in my town I grew up in, uh, I want to give you an example of what not to do. And if you live in Darwin, Minnesota, and I... You probably don't because we don't have internet out there right now. But if you're in Darwin, Minnesota, it's a population of like 227 people or something bizarre like that. They decided to get together and build the world's largest ball of twine. Okay. Now, now the problem is, is that nobody wants to see it, and so they built like a like a big old monument around it. And, and, and if you Google it, it's amazing. So you know when you have a, a purple cat, you gotta be careful though because if you build the world's largest ball of twine. And you don't, and you don't have any product to sell. What are you going to sell? Like twine? Or are we going to have a? They never really thought it through. They're like, build the world's largest ball of twine, and then they didn't really <laughs> think of that part. So pops, though, they sell pop. Right. It's a truck. It's a truck stop. They're trying to attract other truckers. I mean, it makes sense. Yep. Uh, Chick Fil A. We're saying eat more chicken to like basically, uh, you know, um, the cow is saying, hey, don't eat me. Eat more chicken. That's so right. it's a way to push the brand. We got to think through that a little bit. Yeah. Now the next the next purple cow that Chick Fil A has, and there's a lot of Chick Fil A, uh, there's a lot of purple cows you have, but the one I, I think of the most is you have this amazing customer service going on there. You have amazing customer service. I mean, literally, uh, my wife, who's a beautiful lady, she's very very hot. If, honey, if you're watching, you're hot. Anyway, but my wife, she um, she like doesn't like to go to the restroom at other places. So yeah. it, like she will seriously go. Can we go to Chick Fil A because she likes the restroom? Right. Uh, she says we go to Chick Fil A because we have five kids, and when you take the kids, I mean, you have balloons, you got slides in there, you have this whole. It's it's awesome. Talk to me about the customer service. How do you guys? What do you do to take customer service to the next level there? And, and is it is it intentional? Um, it absolutely is intentional. And when when Chick Fil A um, talks about customer service, it's that they want to treat all of our guests with honor, dignity, and respect. And we look for opportunities to do that. And it's not limited to, um, to what Chick-fil-A has said. For example, if, um, if you get a, in Oklahoma especially, you get a cloud burst, um, my employees will go grab umbrellas to walk people out to their car. Because they didn't walk in expecting it to be raining. So mom has two kids, how's she gonna get outside? So we walk them out there, and of course my employees get soaked, but, um, but that's okay. Now if I'm kind of cynical, let's just say that I'm, I'm, I heard you just say this about customer service, but I own a business. Well, a lot of companies, you know, you walk right in and they have a sign that says uh, integrity. You know, I'm just making up the name of a company, but it's like Johnny's Motors. Right. Integrity. Or Johnny's Motors, the best customer service in town. And you go in there and Johnny's got like a ton of oil on his fingers mm -hmm. and the bathroom looks like it might have exploded three or four years ago. It smells like funk. 
you know, the vending machine's empty, and uh, there's overall a lack of quality in the air. How does Chick-fil-A take this idea? Because you say you want to treat every customer with what? Honor, dignity, and respect. Okay, so how do you actually put that into action? Like, how come Chick-fil-A actually has it happen where other companies just say it and it doesn't happen? Well, I think a lot of people don't see the investment in it. Okay. You know, if you invest in your people um, and you invest in, in the experience for your guests, more guests are going to come in. I think a lot of times people try to save their way to success. Mm. You know, so they don't want to spend that extra money to clean the bathroom or get the soap that's going to, you know, or a little nail brush. Yeah. You know, they don't want to pay that because they're worried about the profits. But yeah, what they don't realize is is all the other compounding, um, the compounding effect that you're going to end up losing. Do you now, if you own a business and you're you you know you a lot of businesses have a high schooler working for them. You know? Yeah. And I hear companies say, well, I, you know, you don't understand. It's so hard in my business mm -hmm. to get a high schooler to do their job right. Now, the only problem is, well, you and I have both met Lee Cockrell, the mm -hmm. guy who used to manage Walt Disney World, and 40,000 employees, and they have a lot of college and high school students there who are doing just fine. Uh, but a lot of business owners will say, well, I have high school students. You don't understand. It's hard to motivate them. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say, well, I have 40-year-olds working for me. It's impossible to teach an old dog new tricks or whatever. Yeah. How do you keep your people, you know, because you're not the one who sees every customer. How do you right. keep them on task and doing the right things? Well, honestly, the biggest thing is that those are the requirements. If you want to work with us, you're more that, you know, this is what our expectations are. If, if you're not, then we'll promote you. You know, we'll promote you to customer status. You can go work somewhere else that, that works with you well. You know, not every place needs someone like that. Let me role play through this real quick, okay? All right. I'm, uh, my name's Clay. I've worked for you for about two weeks and I didn't clean the bathroom today. I'm supposed to clean the bathroom. I'm supposed to, but I didn't because I say to you, I forgot. How does that go? What do you say? Well, first of all, I'd probably, um, if you said you forgot, I'd say, I'd, I'd ask you, where's your checklist? Do you have a checklist? Um, and if, and if the rest, well, do you have a checklist, Clay? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I have it in my car. Okay. Um, I would um, tell you to go get the checklist and let's... So I go, I'm back, here it is. All right, so you got your checklist and, you know, what time are you supposed to clean the bathroom? Uh, 9.15. Okay, so we, um, at that point, um, we would kind of discuss what time is we'll go clean. You know, the thing is that we would probably just go have him clean it right now, but we'd really look at, make sure that he has the tools in front of him to make this happen. You know, Clay, if you don't come in um, tomorrow with your checklist, which is your responsibility to bring in, then we're going to have to go ahead and start taking action on it. What, what does that mean? That would mean um, that for us, um, it would start with um, we'd, we'd write you up, and the next time it happened, we'd suspend you, and then the next time after that, you'd be let go. Honestly, you have two stores. How often does this happen? So every um, every so other probably, day? Probably two or three times a week, there's a time we have to sit down with somebody and say, okay, here's our expectations. We're helping somebody right here. Somebody's watching this, and they're going... I get it now, two or three times a week, I've got to talk right. to the freak about bringing his checklist to work, right? right? Or, <laughs> or using soap. Or using the soap. Now also, so Arthur, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm trying to improve the, the, the customer service standards, I look at Chick-fil-A and you have balloons out, on, you know, you have the, the slide for the kids and I'm right. looking at my place and I'm going, I can't even keep my bathroom clean. What specifically do I need to do? What would you recommend that I do to take it to the next level and to make some awesome purple cow customer service? Honestly, if it was me, yeah. if, I was, if I saw that, I would, I'd probably go and speak to the owner of that place um, and say, can you teach me? That's the first step I would do. Is um, um, They are a competitor, and you know what? They may not be willing to help, but you know what? The worst thing they can, the worst thing they can do is kick me out of the restaurant. So you right now, you, I'm just making sure I'm clear on this. You would go to the owner of a restaurant that you admired and yep. say, could you teach me? I do it now. And the owner, do you ever paid an owner to do it? I've never had to because a lot of yeah. times you're like, what is this guy? Do? I mean, I'll, sometimes I'll just walk into a kitchen because yeah. I want to see how that's getting done. And I've learned um, that if you act like you know what you're doing, people don't know how to react. Yeah. And so um, so I'll just walk back there. And if they ask, I'll be like, oh, I'm lost. And But um, I'll start asking them questions. And it, You know, one thing I did years ago is uh, um, in, 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 not necessarily related to customer service, but as far as ha hiring a mentor, yep. um, I really struggled because it was like 2003, 2004, and, I, and, and uh, I just remember that in meetings, I would find in some of our staff meetings that I would get frustrated. And, uh, and it's because I was never willing to have confrontation. And so I went to this top guy, he was a very successful entrepreneur, and I said, I have confrontation in meetings all the time. I feel like I'm not doing a good job. And he says, well, Clay, uh, if, if someone's not getting mad, you're probably not holding anybody accountable. You know, you, you probably need to have somebody mad, at least until everyone understands that's your expectation. That's correct. 
And I said, really? He said, yeah. And I said, will you go with me? He said, I, I got a busy schedule. And I remember I was like, well, I'll pay you $500. He said, just come with me to a couple meetings. I'd love to just have you come with me. And uh, he wouldn't accept payment later on, but he actually came to me with me to some meetings. And in the meeting, he took some notes, and afterwards, he was like, that was weak. You know, like, that was weak. Like, you have to, that guy said that to you, you have to confront him. You have to deal with, you know. And he taught me these principles that I now use today, and it's no big deal. Yeah. But it's like, sometimes we need to have that. So it's no, 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 there's no shame in the game to, to go out there and ask another entrepreneur, hey, could you show me how? Say that the person says no. Yep. Now what do I do? How do I take? How do I instill this best practice purple cow customer service? Well, then um, if that person said no, they won't do it. I'd I'd be stealing as many ideas as I could from the person. You'd be going there eating a lot. Um, I would. I would. In fact, not only that, I would take my upper management and say, guys, I want you to go have lunch um, there or dinner or get your car waxed or whatever you need to there, and I, and um, I'll pay for it if you if you bring back an idea. When was the last time you did this? Last week. Okay, last week? Yeah. Okay, so you heard it here. Uh, don't tell anybody. Just the uh, several million people that might view this, just you guys keep it amongst yourself on the Twitter and the Facebook and wherever you are, just in that community. Don't yeah. put it on Instagram. Okay. So now, um, now Arthur, you know, day after day, week after week, you have to keep the customer service awesome. Yeah. Does it just come down to the checklist? No. 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 It's also about um, the heart of your employees. Okay, so when you're when you're hiring, it's extremely important to know what you're looking for. If if you're hiring somebody with a servant's heart mm. um, that is interested in serving somebody else, that's going to make all the world a bit different. I want to show this to you because I want to see what you'd say to me. Okay? okay, there's a guy I was just talking to today, and guy, if you're watching this, calm down. I'm not going to mention your name. We'll say his name is Reggie, and Reggie owns a business, and Reggie has a dude. We'll call him Tom. Changing the names of these people and their genders to make it safe. This is the owner, right? And this is the employee. Now this guy has a permanent frown on his face. This guy, Tom, yep. is never happy. This owner is always happy. However, recently, because he's never happy, he's never delivering to customers what they need, right. he now has become an entrepreneur who's starting to look like this. And it's a small business, though. It's only four or five people working there. What do you think Reggie, our owner, should say or do with Tom? Because you said, you know, it's about, it's about having the right heart. Right. And this, you know, what, what do you think you should do? Well, first of all, it, it sounds like Tom's in the wrong, in the wrong position, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in this situation, I would really look at Tom and say, is he in the right position? You know, uh, I've recently had an employee that was, um, we hired him as a, a person to kind of be a janitor. Yeah. He's not a good janitor, and the problem is, I mean, he's just he's just slow, and so we had to figure out what to do with him. So we, we actually went around the store and said, where's the best spot for this person? Now, Tom, he might be able to be moved to the dishes or something like that, yeah. but it, it's also, sometimes there's time we just have to let him go. But you're candid with it. You're going to deal with it swiftly. Absolutely. You're not going to let it pull you down. No, absolutely. It is it is our job as a leader, you know, to, to main, the employees want to see what we expect. Mm -hmm. And so if we are, if we're letting the employees kind of dictate that, who's leading who? I bet you in eight out of 10 companies across the country, people like Reggie are being controlled by people like Tom. The employee is actually the boss. Who's controlling what's happening? The employee. And I've seen that over and over. And I hate to say it, but when I was first a young entrepreneur with yeah. Chick-fil-A, there was times when I would look at my, um, my staff and go, Who's calling the shots here? You know, not like they would question me blatantly, but I just didn't want to confront them on it, or I didn't want to deal with it. And so, after a little while, I had to realize this isn't where it should be going. Well, one thing I've noticed too is that in, in businesses, um, it, 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 it's what you ex what you accept mm -hmm. becomes sort of what people believe you expect. I believe is the phrase. Real performance standards are based on the things that you accept, not the things that you expect. Boom. And so if you let it pass through, if you accept it over and over and over, people then just say, well, that's your expectation. Yeah. I was, I was at a store one time, and, um, and I had some people working for me, and this girl comes up, and she has this gold tooth. Okay? And, um, and I was like, okay. You know, I was like, you know what? That's probably not you know, the Chick-fil-A standards, but we'll, we'll allow it. Was it an awesome um, one? Was it grills? Was it like a deal? Like well, hers was just one. Okay, one. Okay. Um, about six months later, I looked at my whole front line, and they all had, I mean, it was like gold, silver, purple teeth. I mean, it was, I, I was looking going, some of them had no teeth. And, and I said, you know what? It kind of, you, um, birds of a feather flock together. And so I started noticing that because I allowed that, then 
everyone that was applying were the people with all the tattoos everywhere and the missing teeth and the hair all over. That was your and, niche. Um, apparently, that was my niche, and thank God I'm not doing the hip hop. The hip hop chicken shop. Apparently. Okay. Awesome. Now. Now, at Chick-fil-A, they've given you some great tools. I right. mean, you have the, the cow that uh, is, you know, the kind of the, pur the your, your purple cow is actually a cow for right. chicken. You were closed on Sundays. You have unbelievably high corporate um, standards Correct. that are set up there. They're super high customer service standards. But you've created your own uh, purple cow. You've differentiated yourself locally, and if people watching this, if you if you're not from Tulsa, if you you know um, when you come to Tulsa, a lot of people uh, really like Chick Fil A, but specifically they know about your Chick Fil A. Most people know about this Chick Fil A. Right. What kind of things have you done to make yourself more memorable, even beyond what Chick Fil A's done for you as a Purple Cow? Well, it kind of all started small, like everything does, and somebody kind of we had a, a new milkshake rollout. Somebody said, "Why don't you make the world's largest milkshake?" And I went, oh, "That'd be fun." Hey, we gotta do that. We we should make a you know giant milkshake. So we made a six foot tall milkshake. Really? And then after I got that, we just started making things bigger and bigger. Did you so, send out a press release and tell the media about it? Well, I didn't on the first one because um, I was encouraged from um, parties that I'm probably not allowed to discuss here mm. um, that that would probably not be wise. Mm. And um, really, they uh, said don't do it. They said don't do it. And oh. so um, and and parties. The reality is when you're dealing with the corporate office. They have to, uh, they have to make sure that there's not guys out there going rogue and doing something they shouldn't. They were yeah. worried about like build a big milkshake. Yeah. Okay. Well, they were they the the quote that I got was they were afraid of food safety. You know, now I had taken all those things in consideration. I dealt with the health department on it, um, but yet some people may not do that. And so after I pulled that off, then when I came to them and said, "Well, I want to make the world's largest lemonade," they said, "All right, we're on board. How can we support you?" Now, so you built the world's largest lemonade. I did. How big was that? That lemonade was, uh, it was in a nine-foot cup. It was 840 gallons, and it took 11,000 lemons. I want to get this on. I want to make sure I'm getting all these factoids right here. How tall was it? Nine feet tall. Nine feet tall, this thing was. And how many lemons went into it? 11,000. 11,000 lemons. Okay, and what else? Hand squeezed. Hand squeezed. And what else? Uh, I think it had uh, roughly... Uh, like uh, 700 pounds of sugar. So this is this massive, for some reason I've drawn a, c a cylinder cup here, but this is a massive cup, it's nine feet tall, and where do you go out and, and get a nine foot tall cup, Arthur? Well, you don't. Um, I went to Sam's because they have everything big there, right? Um, but they like did. a nine foot tall That's cup, right. please. I or did. You know, I, I said, give me your biggest drink you got, and it was only 32 ounces. So, um, so, you know, a lot of people think that creative people just these ideas just pop into their head. Yeah. But that's really not that not the case. And so for me, I had to really dwell upon it and think about how to make this happen. And I talked to when, when did you decide first off that you wanted to build the lemonade? I, I hate to interrupt you, but I want to know when did you decide to? What happened? Well, what happened was um, we just we just thought it'd be cool. My kids and I were talking about Guinness World Records, and and so I remember us talking about it, and they were they were looking at the guy with like seven thousand nails in him, you know, all those things. I'm going, I ain't gonna happen, you know. I'm not gonna have tattoos all. Get the, the nail gun out, kids. <laughs> That's right. Let's see if, how far I can make it. Uh, and so I said, I do food, and so I said, let's do something fun. What about a big lemonade? And so that's when we started the process, and uh, then we then it was now that we figured this out, now we're gonna do this. And one of the things I'm a true believer of, if you're gonna set a goal. Um, you got to share it, you know. Share with as many people as you can, because then you can't back out of it, you know. And and a lot of times I joke with my friends. I'll set a crazy goal and say, if I don't do it, I want you to come up and punch me in the face. Um, no one's punched me in the face yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for that now. But <laughs> um, stuck. <laughs> that's right. So um, so I'll throw my goals out there and tell people what I want, and it helps me stay accountable. And then so you you then you had to go out and get the lemons. How do you get the lemons? I mean, there's 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 eleven thousand lemons. Yeah. Um, Everybody wants to be a part of something big. A lot of people don't have the ideas for it or the manpower or anything. And so I talked to um, our local Sunkiss producer, and um, or not local, but national, and said, hey, would you guys like to be involved? So they're able to help provide me with the lemons. They gave you the lemons? Uh, they, they did. Um, I purchased some, but they, um, they gave me a good majority of them. Did you ask, um, hey, I'd like 11,000. How did you know how many lemons you needed? I didn't. I just said I need 100 cases. <laughs> okay. So you ordered the lemons. Yes. And then and what happened next? Did you need sugar? Uh, we did need sugar. Uh, I wasn't able to get that donated, um, but we were able to, um, you know, we bought the sugar and then the water, you know, came from the faucet. Um, it was real tricky. How many people showed up to get in, to stand in awe of this majestic 
beautiful lemonade. Well, uh, we had we had about 500 people come to that event. Really? Um, it was it was a crazy event. I mean, did did you make any money that day? You mean at the store? I mean, yeah. Did you make any money in the store? I mean, you, you have all these lemons. I Actually, have all this on um, right around that time, because I'd been getting so much press off it, all the news was out there and covering it. Um, we were able to raise ten thousand dollars by selling that lemonade. Wow! Just on the lemonade, we raised ten thousand dollars, gave it to a charity. Um, but um, but for that um, couple of weeks, right around there, we were up in sales, like twenty percent up in sales every single day because people had heard about it and they wanted to come yeah. see it and they wanted lemonade. They wanted to touch me. And it touch the lemonade, <laughs> man. Now, real quick, how how. Um, how much, I mean, did, did you send out a bunch of press releases? Did you send out a ton of these? How many did you send out? Did you send out press releases? Absolutely. Okay. Did, um, I mean, had you done it before? No. Um, but, what did you send? Um, uh, well, uh, Chick-fil-A actually has a PR company that helped me design it. Okay. Um, but um, one thing I've learned is that having local connections is better than having national connections sometimes because, you know, um, because I've been priming the pump. So one of the things I like to do is, for example, again, Oklahoma, we have all these storms. Yeah. So when the storms roll in, um, all the weather guys are up all night long. So what we do is, me and some of my friends, um, we kind of joke about it. We're like storm chasers. We go out there in the tornadoes. We're dodging tornadoes in the hail. And we'll go and take food to all the, the news stations. Mm. So when Arthur Greeno calls and says, hey, I'm doing this giant world record uh, lemonade. The power of chicken. That's absolutely right. Now, real quick, I want to make sure everybody's getting this, though, because if, if you're in a local city right now and you don't know how to do a press release, um, we've got some great episodes about that, but I want to yep. give one thing you can do. If you'll just go up to Google and you'll search for the name um, of the local paper, and then you'll type in some sort of category that relates to this. So if you typed in, like, in, if you're in Tulsa, if you typed in the Tulsa World, and then you were giving money away to the Little Lighthouse. Right. But if I typed in Tulsa World plus charity, you can usually find a story that's written about charity by the Tulsa World. And you can usually find the reporter who covers that kind of thing on the actual website, and they almost always give the email of the reporter. And if not, you can just call up to the station and ask for them. Mm -hmm. But I have a ton of success by calling up that specific reporter and going, hey, is this Sarah? Hey, I saw your story you did about this charity, and we're doing a huge lemonade stand, and I just wanted to share with you about it because we're trying to raise money for this cause, and I know you'd reported on other charities in the past, and I just thought it'd be a great story for Tulsa. Absolutely. And I get a lot of success with that. So I think there's, um, but yeah, if, if you build it, they will come. If it's, if it's a big purple cow, I mean, people will show That's up, exactly right? exactly right. It's funny because people know you. Yeah. And they say, isn't that the guy who did the, the, the big old iced tea thing? Yeah. Isn't that the guy who did the, so you and then later did the biggest iced tea, didn't you? I did. Our, our world record for the, um, our Guinness world record that we actually got official for the lemonade got beaten by some providence in China. What? I know, it made some weird blueberry drink. So I thought, I can't have them take me down. Now I know that the, the, the communism in China is kind of a little bit it's less limited, it's less, less restrictive than it used to be. Yeah. So there could be potentially thrivers in China right now. Do That's you right. want to um, threaten anyone who would challenge your record for the, another record? Or no, are you, you okay? Because I look at it like all they did was challenge me to set another one and we had a lot more fun. Okay, okay, awesome. Now, let me ask you this here. Um, when you decide to organize these events and you, you decide to go for it, that's great. You've done it. I'm excited for you. We're buddies. That's great. But what if I own an air conditioning business right now? And I am located in the middle of Des Moines, Iowa. Des right. Moines. And uh, I'm saying I want to be on the news and have a lot of people show up and push my sales up by 20%. Where, where can I come up with an idea? And then how can I do something like this? If I'm in an air conditioning business, let's say, what would well, I Well, you can email me, and for $10,000, I'll give you an idea. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> so um, here's what I try to do is when, when we're trying to create something um, big or whatever, the first thing we say is, what's going to be remarkable? What are people going to remark about? Mm -hmm. What can I do that people remark about? And then I also say, what is fun? You know, what would be a lot of fun? What is fun? So, um, so if I, if I had an air conditioning company, I think something would be a lot of fun would be um, get some abandoned building, hook your air conditioning up to it, run it as cold as you can, and bring a snowmaker in there and have a oh. snowball machine, a snowball fight. So like a snowball fight in the middle of the summer. Absolutely. Just 
sponsored to you by the guys at such and such. The guys at Repair Air and say, you know what, this is all done with repaired air conditioning or something. I mean, just what would be fun that would make people talk and be impressive? I like this game. Okay, that was an easy one and you aced it, okay? Now you're kind of a PR wizard, so I'm gonna try to stress, stress your brain a little bit. Here we go. I'm thinking of a haircut business. It's a haircut business. It is located in, in, in oh, oh, it's in South Dakota, um, in, in, a, in a small town, but the population is like about 10,000 people in this town. How do I stand out and break out of the clutter with my haircut business in the small town in South Dakota? Go. Okay, and what kind of haircutting business is it? Dudes. I'm um, all guys. All dudes. Here we go. The great Green Rooney. can he do it? I don't know. Um, how about... Um, I was thinking, like, what if you shaved everyone's heads? I was just thinking, I seriously was just thinking that. Like, if you come in and shave your head, we'll donate the money to, like, cancer research. There There's you something go. powerful like that. And we'll paint it pink. And if you get a bowl cut, we'll donate uh, a soup bowl to the soup kitchen. That's right, you can have a rice bowl for free. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's something we can do, right? Absolutely. Uh, I know that I, I actually do some uh, partnering with a guy who owns a haircut business. We do a cut-a-thon, and the cut-a-thon is basically we do free haircuts right. for a uh, period of time. And if you pay anything, it all goes to cancer research. So there's, there's things you can do. We've had a lot of coverage. A lot of people have been blessed. A lot of money's been raised. It's been a neat thing. Yeah, I think, that, well, when you, when you do these things, make sure that you are having fun because, um, like, my team members love it when I do these things. You know, they're like, I want to be a part of this. You know, I want to take off work. I mean, that, that's a bad part if I do it on Saturday. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to work. I want to come play. See, Arthur, final, final question here for you, and then I'll stop harassing you. Um, it's super important, we know, for a business to be remarkable, otherwise it's invisible. Right. Is there any final tip you want to give to the people out there who are struggling, they have a business yep. that's invisible, no one knows what they do, no one knows where they're located, no one's buying from them. Any other final tip? Yep. When you're doing marketing uh, and you're trying to be noticed, start, start at home. Okay, what can you do inside? What does the inside of your restaurant look like? What does the outside of your restaurant look um, like? Uh, actually, uh, we put flags outside of our restaurant, and literally today I got a phone call from the city saying you have to pull those flags down. What? Because they have Chick-fil-A icons on them. So, but then we called him back and said, now I know that we can't have icon flags up there. What kind of flags can we have? And he said, well, you can have American flags or state flags. And I said, what about blank flags? And he said, sure. So we ordered a bunch of blue blank flags to put up just because um, the flags wave and it attracts attention. The city called you today? Actually, they stopped by and they threatened us. Really? So. Uh, if you work for the city uh, of most cities, just know that I don't like you. Okay. But anyway, so uh, um, we that's that's good stuff. And uh, I think it's awesome, though, that you have created a purple cow that attracts the attention of the city. Yeah. And the customers. Yes. But really, I mean, you're beloved in your city. The uh, uh, customers love you, and your companies are your company continues to grow, and you definitely are remarkable. So I, I you. appreciate you for being here, my friend, and uh, um, you've just in inspired me with some new ideas tonight. So I'm gonna probably have to pull an all-nighter and get some flags. All right, let's do it. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, JT. So hypothetically, in your mind, what is the purpose of having a business? Um, to get you to your goals. So it's a vehicle to get you to your destination. Whoa. And would uh, you need profits to get there? I mean, is the, is the, when you have a business that's successful and you're in your mind, in your expert opinion, would you need profits to get you to your, to get you to your, to your goals? Yeah. Cause if you have a $15 million business, but you have $15 million of expenses, it's kind of pointless. Holy crap. All right. So the question I would have here for you, if you could take like, I don't know, 10 minutes or less, and see if you could save 3000 bucks a year by reducing your credit card fees. Would you do it? Yes, absolutely. Holy crap. Why would somebody out there who's listening right now who has a sane mind, why would they not uh, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card, thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card to schedule a 10-minute consultation to see if they can reduce their credit card fees by at least 3000 bucks a year? Why would they not do it? Yeah, why would they not do it? Um, maybe because they didn't understand how you said the website. <laughs> this tree is a symbol of the spirit of the Griswold family Christmas. No, that's that's clear. Okay, so that that could be a, that could be true. So I would encourage everybody to check out thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. Thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. What would be another reason why someone would not be willing to take ten minutes to compare rates to see if they could save three thousand dollars or more on credit card fees? Maybe they think it is a waste of time and that it won't. It's not possible. So there's somebody out there that's making more than three thousand dollars every ten minutes, and they're like, nah, that's not yeah. worth my time. We getting there, right, money. Huh.
me getting they rap money. There's probably some someone out there. Okay. Never think that. Well, I'll just tell you, folks, if you're out there today and uh, you're making less than uh, $3,000 per 10 minutes, I would highly recommend that you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash hard uh, it, it, because you can compare rates, you can save money. And, you know, the, the big the big goal, in, in my opinion, of building a, a business is to create time freedom and financial freedom. And in order to do that, you have to maximize your profits. Holy crap. Now, one way to maximize your profits is to increase your revenue. Another way to do it is to decrease your expenses. It's a profit deal. <laughs> it takes the pressure off. JT, is there any other reason why somebody would not be willing to take 10 minutes to compare rates to see if they could save a total of three thousand dollars a year on average i am at a loss and i cannot think of any other shampoo is better i go on first and clean the hair conditioner is better i leave the hair silky and smooth oh really fool really <laughs> stop looking at me swan well, let me tell you a good story here real quick here. I actually, uh, years ago, compared rates uh, with this company here called IPS. It's Integrated Payment Services. And I, I scheduled a consultation. I I don't know that I was skeptical. I just thought, whatever, I'll take 10 minutes. I'll compare rates. I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? And in my case, in my in my case, in my particular case, I save over twenty thousand dollars a year. Holy crap! Wow. Which is, uh, you know, like uh, groceries when my wife goes to the organic stores. Find everything you need today. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Oh god. No. Everything okay, ma'am? Uh, it's just that you've only scanned a few items and it's already 60 bucks. Uh, I'm so scared. Okay, I'm a trained professional, ma'am. I've scanned a lot of groceries. I need you to stay with me. It's just that my in-laws are in town and they want a charcuterie board. Well, this isn't gonna be easy, so I need you to be brave, all right? What's your name? Patricia. Patricia, all right. I need you to take a deep breath. We're about to do the cheese. You know, that's the yeah. difference between Holy eating goodness. organic and not organic. So because my wife eats organic, I had to take the 10 minutes needed to compare rates to save the $20,000 a year on credit card fees just for one of my companies. One question, what's the brand name of the clock? The brand name of the clock, Rod, do brand we have Brand name it? of the clock, it's an elegant from Ridgeway. It's from Ridgeway. Let's, let's buy. Buy the clock. And sell the fireplace. So I encourage everybody out there, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash credit dash card. You schedule a free consultation, request information. A member of our team will call you. They'll schedule a free consultation. It should take you 10 minutes or less. Uh, and they're going to compare rates and see if they can't save you more than $3,000 a year off of your credit card processing. You were hoping what? I wouldn't owe you money at the no, end of the day. No, you don't owe us money. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, the goal of a business is to create time freedom and financial freedom. And in order to do, and in order to do that, you need to create additional profits. Let's go. Let's go. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. 
and the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay, so 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten. People really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We, it was a system that we, that we followed with Thrive in, in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the 411 percent shows that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was 91 percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months. Or I'm sorry, the first we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year and it's incredible but but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that that thrive has taught us and and, and helped us out with so. some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews that way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team um, we've created and implemented checklists that way everything um, gets done and it gets done right uh, we it creates accountability uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like I said, the diligence and um, consistency and doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business um, and we were, we were in a rut and we the, didn't know oh, sorry. the last three years our customer base had pretty much stayed the same we weren't shrinking but we weren't really growing either yeah and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go what to do uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in um, but Thrive helped us with that you know they, they implemented those systems that they taught us those systems they taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed now it's been a grind absolutely it's been a grind this last year um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into it. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you are looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like 
running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day-to-day -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies he's at the top he has a team of uh, business coaches videographers gra and graphic designers and web developers and they run 160 companies every single week so think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies so in the weekly he's running 160 companies um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13 step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like, Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and that's what I like most about him. He's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or, uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing, and this is our new team. We went from four to 14, and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past, and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman, so we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts, and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grossed 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now, it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. The Thrive Time Show, two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet.
You can learn the proven uh, 13 point business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two day, 15 hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big, uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, but I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever. And we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. We go back eight years ago. Think about the, the number of clients you had back then versus the number of clients you have now. As a percentage, what has been the growth over the past eight years, do you think? we got to well, inspire somebody out there who just well, doesn't have the time to listen okay, to their calls. Okay, so, Clay, it's, it's, it's like I would go up and down from uh, about $10,000 a month up to about 40000 but it was up and down roller coaster. And so now we've, we've got it to where we're in excess of 100 clients. That's awesome. And so I would have anywhere from five clients to 20 clients on my own with networking, but I had no control over it. I, I, I didn't, without the systems, you're going to be at the, you're going to be victimized by your own business. For the, somebody out there who struggles with math, if you, let's say that your average number of clients was 30 and you go to 100, as a percentage, what is that? I, I have grown, I have doubled every year since working with you. So I've doubled in clients. I've doubled in revenue every year. It's a hundred percent growth every year I've worked with. Now, so so I'm looking. We've been good friends seven, eight years, and I've got doubled five times, which is just incredible. I mean, the first time you do it, that's one thing, but when you do it repeatedly, yeah, I mean that's we're unbelievable. Work, we're working our blessed assurance off this year to double. We're planning on doubling again. We're incorporating new. Some, some some new things in there to really help us do it, but we are going to double again this year. I started coaching, but it would go up and down, Clay. That's when I came to you as I was going up and down, and I wanted to go up and up instead of up and down. And so that's when it needed a system. So creating a system is you have nailed down specific steps that you're going to take, no matter how you feel, no matter the results, you lean into them and you do them regardless of what's happening. You lean into them and it will give you X number of leads. You follow up with those leads, turns into sales. Well, I tell you, you know, it, it's if you don't have a script and you don't have a system, then every day is a whole new creation. You're creating a, a lot of energy just to figure out what are you going to do. Right. And the best executives, Peter Drucker is a father of modern management. He said, the most effective executives make one decision a year. What you do is you make a decision, what is your system? And then you work like the Dickens to make sure you follow that system. And so that, that, that's really what it's all about. So with a script here, 
I, you know, I, uh, we have a brand new gal that just came, came in working for us. She nailed down the script, and yep. she's been nailing down appointments. Usually, we try to get one appointment for every 100 calls. We make two to 300 calls a day per rep. Right. And she's been nailing down five and eight appointments a day. Somebody out there is having a hard time. script. What's, so she's making how many calls a day? She's making between two and 300 calls a day. Whoa. And our relationship is weird in that we, we do, um, if someone were to buy an Apple computer today, yeah. and, uh, or, or let's say you bought a personal computer, a PC, the computer is made by, let's say, Dell. But then the software in the computer um, would be Microsoft, let's say, or Adobe or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, make, I basically make the systems. And uh, you're, you're like the computer and I'm like the software. It's kind of how I would describe our relationship. Yeah. Tim, uh, I want to ask you this. You and I reconnected, um, and, uh, I think it was in the year 2000 and uh, what was it? Maybe 2010? Is that right? 2011 maybe? Or no, maybe, maybe further down the road. Maybe 2013? 2012. Okay, so 2012. And uh, at that time, I, had, I was five years removed from the, D, from the DJ business. And you were how many years removed from tax and accounting software? Uh, it was about... 10, 11 years. We met, um, how did we re-meet? What was the first interaction? There was some interaction where you and I first connected. I just remember that somehow you and I went to Hideaway Pizza. But do you remember when we first reconnected? Yeah. Uh, well, we had that speaking thing. that. Uh, oh, there it was. So yeah. it was Victory Christian Center. I was yeah. speaking there. My name is Robert Redmond. I uh, actually first met Clay almost three years ago to the day. I don't know if he remembers it or not. But I wasn't working with him at the time. I asked to see him and just ask him some questions to help, you know, direct my life, to get some mentorship. Uh, But I've been working with Clay for now just over a year. Uh, The role I play here is a business coach, uh, business consultant. I work with different businesses, implementing uh, best practice processes and systems that I have uh, learned here uh, by working with Clay. And the experience working here has to put it real plainly, has been just life-changing. Um, I have not only learned new things and uh, have gained new knowledge, uh, but, but I have gained a whole new mindset um, that I believe wherever I end up uh, will serve me well throughout the rest of my life. Since working with Clay, uh, I have learned so much. I mean, I would like to say almost everything about, about business in terms of the different categories. I haven't learned it all. Uh, but I've learned all about marketing. I've learned about advertising. I've learned about branding. I've learned how to create a sales process for organizations in any industry. I've learned how to sell. Uh, I've learned how to create repeatable systems and processes and uh, hold people accountable, um, You know how to hire people. It j- it's, it's almost like every aspect of a business you can learn, I have learned um, a lot in, in those different categories. Uh, and then, Again, the the mindset that I've gained here um, has been huge. You know, uh, working here, uh, you can't you, you can't be a mediocre person. Um, you are uh, a call to a higher standard of of excellence, and then as you're called to that standard here, you begin to see those outcomes in every area of your life. Uh, that standard of excellence that that you want to implement, um, no matter what you're involved in. Uh, I would like to describe the other. Uh, people that, that work with Clay uh, are people that are going somewhere with their life. Uh, Marshall in, in the group interview uh, talks about how, uh, you know, the, the best fits for this organization are, are the people that, that are goal-oriented. So they're on their own trajectory, and we're on our own trajectory. And uh, the, the best fits are those people where there can be a, a mutually beneficial relationship, that as we pursue our goals, uh, and we help the business pursue those goals, the uh, business helps us pursue our goals as well. Uh, and so I'd say people that are driven, people that want to make something of their lives, uh, people that are uh, goal-oriented, they're focused, uh, uh, and uh, they're committed to c- overcoming any adversity that may uh, come their way. Clay's passion for helping business uh, owners grow their businesses is it, it's, it's unique in that I don't know if there's anyone else's that can be as passionate. Um, you know, whenever a business starts uh, uh, working with Clay, uh, it, it's almost as like Clay is, is running that business in the sense that he has something at stake. Um, you know, he's just serving them. 
uh, they're, they're, they're one of his clients, but it's, it's as if he is actively involved in the business. Whenever they have a win, he's posting it all over his social media. He's shouting it across uh, the, the room here, here at Thrive. Um, you know, he's uh, sending people encouraging messages. He can kind of be that, that life coach and, and, and business coach in terms of being that uh, a motivator and that champion for uh, people's businesses. It's, 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 again, unique because there's no one else I've seen uh, get so excited about and passionate about other people's businesses. The kind of people that wouldn't like working with Clay are people that are satisfied with, with mediocrity, uh, people that uh, want to get through life by just doing enough, by just getting by, uh, people who are not looking to develop themselves, people who are not coachable, people who think that they know it all and they're unwilling to change. Um, I would say those are the type of people. In, in short, anyone that's content with mediocrity uh, would not like working with Clay. So if, if um, you're meeting Clay for the first time, the advice I'd give you is uh, definitely come ready to take tons of notes. Uh, every time Clay speaks, he uh, um, it gives you a wealth of knowledge uh, that you don't want to miss. I remember the first time that I met Clay, I literally carried a notebook with me all around. I was looking at this notebook the other day, actually. I carried a notebook with me uh, all around, and I just took tons of notes. I filled the entire notebook in uh, about, about three or four months, uh, just from being around Clay, following him, and, and, and learning from him. And then I would say, come, come coachable. Uh, uh, be, be open to uh, learning something new. Be open to challenging yourself. Uh, be open to um, learning and, and adjusting parts about you that, that uh, need to be adjusted.